Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time, ERC. Today we reflect upon the Gospel passage from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 38 onwards, where the sisters of Lazarus, Martha and Mary, welcome Jesus into their home and they show different types of hospitality to Jesus. We know the story. Traditionally, it is interpreted as Martha representing a more active way of life and Mary a more contemplative way of life. Martha is shown as a perfect host and Mary is shown as a perfect disciple. Though these interpretations are meaningful and relevant, I think these passages have a deeper meaning for us. And they talk to us about being a host and being hospitable itself. As we heard in the first reading, Abraham was a good host to three strangers, and therefore he was rewarded. Being hospitable is a very commendable virtue according to the Bible. The first letter of St. Peter, chapter 4, verse 9 says, Be hospitable without grumbling. The letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, says, Show hospitality to others, to the strangers. The letter to Titus, chapter 1, verse 8 says, Be hospitable, be good. So today, when we are reflecting upon this gospel passage, we are given two messages for our reflection. One, to be a good host, to be hospitable, does not mean to do a lot of things for the guest, but it is more to be with the guest. So doing for the guest is less important than being with the guest. That's why Jesus said, Mary has chosen the best part. Secondly, Jesus wants to be the host if we allow him. For that, we need to slow down in life. We have to sit down next to him. And in that way, we will be settling down in our lives. Let's reflect upon these two messages. The first one, being hospitable does not mean doing for the guest. Look at the gospel passage. Martha and Mary welcome Jesus. Jesus had already become a kind of distractor, a kind of enemy for the Jews, for many Jews. So many were distancing themselves from Jesus. The Samaritans, of course, they didn't want to receive Jesus because he was going to Jerusalem. At that time, these two are receiving, welcoming Jesus. That means they both love Jesus. That's why they wanted to be hospitable. They wanted to show their love to Jesus. And Martha, as usual, is busy getting things ready for him. Mary, on the other hand, sits at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. For any Jew of that time, this is an unthinkable thing. Because to sit at the feet of a master, a rabbi, would mean a, to become a disciple. And a woman was not supposed to be a disciple. Her position was in the kitchen, where nobody notices. When Martha was complaining, she was actually telling Mary back into the kitchen where you belong to. But Jesus says, Mary has chosen the best part. What does it mean? Mary is showing us a different way of being hospitable, a different way of showing, expressing our love, our care and concern. Not by doing a lot of things, but being with the person we love. And that's what Jesus said. That's a higher way of being a host, a higher way of being a friend, being with. Think of a visitor, a guest coming to our, ho our house. What are we, what will be our concerns? We'll be busy preparing things, how to feed them, how to serve them. So, we associate hospitality 
welcoming a guest with feeding them. The famous French postmodern philosopher Jacques Derrida gives this example from the life of Socrates, a philosopher, a famous philosopher from the ancient Greek. Socrates was instructing his disciples in his school and then comes a visitor, a foreigner from another place who had come to learn from Socrates. And Socrates instead puts him in the center and asks him, tell us more about yourself. And Socrates steps back. The word foreigner there means xenos, from which comes the word xenophobia. We are familiar with it. Derrida says, instead of xenophobia, where the other is seen as a threat, that comes when I am making myself the sender. Socrates is practicing xenophilia, loving the other. So it is not xenophobia, it's xenophilia. And there I put the other in the sender. I stand next to him or behind him and allow him or her to speak. That is true hospitality. That is what Mary is doing. She is there with Jesus, telling Jesus, tell us more about yourself. That is being a guest. To open our hearts, our homes for the other and step ourselves back. And this kind of hospitality to migrants, to foreigners, to refugees is so close to the heart of Pope Francis, as all of us know. So being a good host need not be receiving a guest into our homes. We can be a good host any time in our life when we are opening our hearts, putting the other in the center, and when we are able to step back. Of course, we need Marthas in our churches, in our parishes, in our communities, at home, in our working place, so that the work be done. Marthas are important. However, we need Marthas who are willing to listen. We need parents who are willing to listen. We need friends who are willing to listen. In our over-concern to do things for our beloved ones, we forget to take time with them. The parents are doing, planning a lot of things, but they fail to find time to be with the children. The spouse is the same thing. There's a lot of working to do. There's a lot of planning to be done. But being a true friend, being a true host, being a true parent needs time to be with. That's why we need Marthas who are willing to listen. Of course, we need Marys as well. Marys who are willing to do things. So, Marthas who are willing to listen and Marys who are willing to do. That Secondly, Jesus tells the modern man who has no time to sit, who is always running about planning, doing things, running from one appointment to the other, planning for one event after another, who prefers the word multitasking in their lives, to slow down, to sit down, so that their lives will be settling down. Jesus wants to be the host of our lives. For that we need to take time to sit with him. Modern man has no time to slow down, to sit down. Even Sundays they have no time, they are busy. And that's why at the end many people feel an emptiness within themselves. They do not find peace within themselves. They do not feel that they, are, they have settled down. That's because there is an inner thirst within all of us which God alone can satisfy. God alone can quench, as Saint Augustine says. But by the time people realize that they have failed to attain the real peace of mind, the real satisfaction in their lives, it is too late. In the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, 
the prophet is complaining against the people of Israel. Verses 1 and 2 says, Woe to a people who are going to Egypt and who are relying on the horsepower and their chariots. The background is this. When the king of Assyria came to attack Israel, the people of Israel, the king of Israel thought the best thing to do is turn to Egypt, which was very famous for their horsepower. So they went to Egypt for help. That's when prophet comes and says, Woe to a people who rely on the chariots and horses of Egypt. And verse 15, chapter 30, verse 15, the prophet says, In return and rest you shall find peace. As we very often say and sing, Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. So today on this 16th Sunday, the readings invite us, first of all, to be a good host by being with, and secondly, allowing Jesus to be our host by slowing down, sitting down, and settling down. May the Lord bless all of us and all our intentions. Amen.